Ariel Henry, the rise and fall of Haiti's Prime Minister. Ladies and gentlemen, we can engage in one of my most favourite pastimes today, slagging off the French. <laughs> Every tasteful human being loves slagging off the frogs, and I am no exception. And the thing is, when you really understand French history, when you really do the reading, you realise that what Dr David Starkey said, all bad ideas are French, is actually true. And there is no nation on earth that has managed to coil one out on the collective heads of planet earth better than France. It is a truly detestable nation and its history is full, is replete with actions and individuals that make the worst excesses of the British Empire look like a picnic with Mary Poppins. <laughs> so I'm going to get into a brief, factually accurate, crass and somewhat insulting history lesson. Tell you exactly why Haiti is as bad of a state as it is now and read the claptrap that the BBC has to say about it. So let's get started, shall we? <laughs> When a country's leader resigns, they are often described as embattled. That description could not be more fitting for Haiti's Ariel Henry. Also, before the pedants start, I'm assuming with the French history, that is pronounced something like Ariel Henry. But being an obstinate Englishman, I always called Terry Henry. <laughs> The Arsenal striker, Terry Henry, because he said he didn't like it the way we pronounced it. It was Henri. So no, you're called Terry Henry. Shut up. And I do the same with Bombay, Peking, and yes, Chicken Kievs. Suck on it. Mr. Henry, the country's Prime Minister since July 2021, announced on Monday that he would step down as soon as a transitional council was created to replace him. July 2021. So he's doing a better job than the last four co Conservative Prime Ministers. That's how much we suck. The Prime Minister of Haiti has got a more secure job than the British Prime Minister. That's how you know you're basically living in a banana republic. When our Prime Minister looks over his shoulder at Haiti and goes, yeah, we could use some of that stability in our government. His resignation seemed inevitable as a wave of gang violence swept through the capital, making it impossible for him to return from a trip abroad. It's possible he just might end up in a kebab if he comes back. <laughs> <laughs> because cause they're eating each other, which is hilarious. Because lefties shrieked in rage when Donald Trump said the obvious about Haiti. And I made this point at the time. The idea that our leaders have to speak in some weird gibberish, managerial speak, when the 99% are perfectly capable of digesting hard truths and listening in plain English. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The term that Trump used was shit all right. And I know nobody at all who hasn't used that term on more than one occasion. It is plain English. It's perfectly acceptable. Even posh people. If Owen Jones was sat with Laurie Penny having the breakfast and she said, where are you going on your next holiday, Owen? And he said, oh, I think I'll go to Hartlepool. She'd say, what are you going there for? It's a shit all. <laughs> this isn't controversial language, but they had a fake meltdown about it because he said the obvious. It is and was, and it still is, because people eat each other there. They would tell you that. If you bumped into a Haitian in Leeds, probably loads of them in Leeds now, we know what we like, we will take in anyone with an arsehole. Uh, uh, and you said to them, why did you come to Leeds? Why didn't you stay in Haiti? They would say, uh, because it is a shit -all. Easy. If it's good enough for them, it should be good enough for us. And then there's loads of links to other stories about it. How gangs came to dominate Haiti, how the PM had to resign as law and order collapsed, how it spiralled to collapse as gangs tightened the grip. It's one of the worst countries on earth. And it's just another example of how the loony left are wrong about everything, all of the time. And then when they get proved to be wrong, beyond any reasonable doubt, they pretend like it didn't happen. They are always wrong about everything. They were wrong about the jabs, they were wrong about the pandemic response, and I've got the receipts. Three years ago I was saying it, exactly parroting Peter Hitchens and saying it's not a zero-sum game, the pandemic will kill people, but the response will kill people. And we need to do the maths and decide which is going to be most dangerous. And looking at the numbers, normal people up and down the country read the papers and said, seems to me like the lockdown will probably kill a lot more people. And lo and behold, we've been proved right. They were wrong. They were wrong then and they're wrong now. And they're always wrong. But just as one example of the many, many hundreds I could pick, 
Here is the ginger liberal Conan O'Brien doing a propaganda piece for Haiti, thinking that lying about it would make Trump look bad. So I wanted to come here and show positive, great, beautiful things about Haiti. So I need to come here to show something positive for Haiti. But I understand why just seeing an American right now with a camera would make people angry. I actually wrote a speech in, uh, tried to write a speech in Creole, but I, I can't say it very well about my intentions here. Bonjour Haiti! Okay? Je suis pour que ça. When Contan and Pil, boom, rencontrer tout mon anbe pesa. Okay? Just trite, pointless, cringe bollocks. You can see them whispering to each other as well, kind of like, Bagsy eating his left knacker. <laughs> this is the world they inhabit though. They think if they really, really feel like something should be true, then it's true. And if Trump said it's a dump, then I feel like it shouldn't be a dump. It should be amazing. So it is. And the next thing you know, they've been mashed up and rolled into a corn burger or something. Like, they're all completely off it, these people. Pure wishful thinking. It's all they operate off. Oh, yeah, and I promise you a brief history lesson. Well, here it is. Haiti isn't far from Jamaica, and it, it literally shares a massive land border with the Dominican Republic. Unfortunately for the Haitians, though, Jamaica was administered by the Brits, and the Dominican Republic was administered by the Spanish. Haiti was unlucky enough to be French. And funny old thing, the nation that spawned Foucault, and Derrida, and Napoleon, and the Sorbonne, and basically everything that's shit in the world, um, they made them buy their own freedom. And as a result, while those other two nations have got on quite well since the collapse of the colonial powers, Haitians think they're having a good day when one of the kids doesn't get eaten on the way to the ramshackle shed that functions as a school for them. It's a proper, proper dive. And I come from Middlesbrough. I know a dive when I see it. The last time I seen people eating each other was in the car park at Aldi on Linthorpe Road, Middlesbrough. So I've seen the horrors of cannibalism up close. <laughs> it's wrecked. It's in ruins because of France, our ancient enemies, the people who were selling the Argies missiles throughout the Falklands War and have stabbed us in the back 10,000 times throughout the last 10,000 years. Francophobia is logical and reasonable. Just ask the Haitians. So am I glad we're out of the European Union? Yes. If it was down to me, I would issue 10 million barge poles to all of the inhabitants of the East Coast and just try to push ourselves away from France. And I would certainly never have built a tunnel connecting us to them. I mean, think about that. Building a tunnel connecting yourself to a country like France is the definition of madness. It's like choosing to be a Siamese twin and stitching yourself to one of the survivors that crawled out of the rubble at Chernobyl. <laughs> it's just a bad idea on the face of it. But what do I know? I'm just working class scum. Clever people thought we should have connected ourselves to France and look how much better the world is now. Way better than it was in 1980. Everything's going brilliantly. I'm just glad we didn't get rabies. That was, I mean, thank the Lord for small mercies, eh? But anyway, that's just what I think. Don't talk about Haiti. Don't go to Haiti. Don't listen to anybody that's woke. And you can't go far wrong, is the short way to sum up this story. But I'd love to know what you think. Please let me know in the comments, as usual. And I will see you all very soon. Toodle pip. Cheers. Mm -hmm.